Greetings, Cyberdogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from the newly completed Nether Portal Temple Tunnel in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival series. In the previous episode, we managed to get Griswold from Dogtown to come and live in Mole City. And in this episode, my friends, we are finally going to start working on the brand new Cyberdog monument that is going to be overlooking Mole City. So sit back and relax, my Cyber Diggity Dog. We have got a butt ton to do in this episode and I have a really sweet ass story to tell you and I'm going to get eight more of you guys onto the Dogolith at the end of this episode. So without further ado, let's start playing some Minecraft my friends. Well as you can see I have spent the last, I don't know, couple of hours or so finishing off the nether portal temple tunnel. I've had to go back to the nether to get more nether bricks to make more nether... Uh, nether rack, sorry, to, to make more nether bricks, to make nether stairs and all of that jazz, to go get a whole bunch of lava also. But I have finally finished the tunnel and I actually think it looks pretty freaking sweet. I like how it sort of follows the same design as the sewers of Mole City and I really, really like the glowstone and iron fences we've got going on over here as well as the lava. Um, I, I did want to do more elaborate glowstone things on the side here, like glowstone braziers, but actually I kind of like this simple design because as you run along the tunnel you can just see the lava in your peripherals and I actually really like that I've also uh, finished off the steppage over here and uh, I sort of fixed the entrance into the into the mole hole also so I think that everything is looking very very awesome we've got glowstone running all the way down the tunnel um, and so that's going to stop any spawning happening in the tunnel and as you can see I like how the tunnel transitions into the nether portal temple and uh, it just it just feels really really awesome and now all we have to do now guys to finish off this project finally this giant ass project that we worked on is finish the cathedral entrance over here and the idea is to make this mountainside look like it's actually collapsed over the top of this roof over here and uh, we also want to do something with this mountainside and of course inside over here is the witch's cave which at some point we have to get to and we have to finish the, the witch's cave also at the moment we've just got our brewing stand over here but I want to make this cave much more awesome than it is at the moment so we still have quite a lot of work to do on this project but that is cool we're getting one step closer to finishing it off once and for all and I really like how the tunnel has turned out looking absolutely sweet um, I've also got rid of all of the railway lines that were running through the mole hole um, you know the railway line that we used to deliver Griswold um, in the previous episode and I've also done a little bit of more work around here. I quickly want to show you guys what I've done. Um, I was getting tired of jumping onto the roof to get into Mole City so I made a little door over here. This is just temporary because there's going to be another apartment over here but for now um, I've made a door with a button on both sides of the, this iron door so Griswold can't get out and uh, Beatrice can't get in. Um, to Mole City and Griswold can't go and spend some time with uh, with Beatrice if you know what I'm saying. Griswold I know your freaking plans you are a sneaky little bastard and I know what you're thinking look at those eyes man I know what you're thinking <laughs> um, but Griswold is it's kind of weird like he, he likes being down here and he, he also sometimes goes up to this apartment over here um, he comes and hangs out in here for a while but um, I don't know, he, he seems to be chopping and changing between his apartment and the apartment above him. Maybe he's thinking about buying that apartment. Dude, you cannot monopolize Mole City, man. I know you're a blacksmith and uh, I know that you're probably quite rich, but you can't just buy every freaking apartment in here. Oh, and guys, I wanted to mention, a lot of you guys mentioned in the previous episode that uh, Griswold is actually a priest NPC. He's actually not a blacksmith NPC. And we could have found a blacksmith NPC if he had a black coat on, but we actually found the purple one. So he is a priest blacksmith okay <laughs> so he's kind of hardcore man he, he he can cast healing spells and he can smith stuff so that's pretty awesome um when we make a, a church or something we're gonna have to find another priest or we could find a blacksmith and make him a blacksmith priest look at you what are you doing you are trying to get to griswold aren't you oh god the pain Beatrice doesn't love me no more. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's get back into the mole hole, guys. I've got a few things that I wanted to do in this episode. I've been uh, I've been sort of trying to organize my inventory and whatnot, and I've just been fiddling around in all of my chests. I managed to find another block of gold, which we're going to add to Granny Dog's monument. But what I thought we would do to start this episode off, guys, is head up to the Wizard's Tower and enchant Skullcap of the Dog, because we we all we have to do to get a full set of enchanted armor is enchant skullcap of the dog and enchant leggings of the dog and then we will actually have a full set 
of enchanted armor and that is freaking sweet man um so that is that's what i want to start off today but the sun is almost down so it's almost time for sleep and hmm paloma what do you reckon you reckon we should sleep first yeah i think we should sleep first let's let's check the butthole see if there's anything to grind i don't think so though no because i've been heading to the farmlands and stuff and when you go too far away from the butthole it actually despawns um the mobs that are in the in the the, the spawning trap so that's unfortunate but you know I think after today's episode, we're going to be hanging around the molehole quite a lot. So hopefully the butthole will be nice and jam-packed for a good old grinding a little bit later on. Because <laughs> that's what we like up in this episode, man. Um, anyway, guys, let's get back to what we are trying to do in this episode. And that is head into the Wizard's Tower. I don't think that a lot of you guys who are new subscribers and, and maybe haven't watched uh, Season 1 or Season 2 yet. I know you're going to watch them, right? See this enchanted pickaxe? Your butthole? They will be friends if you don't watch season one and season two. <laughs> but I don't think you guys have actually seen the, uh, the Wizard's Tower. This is the Wizard's Tower and inside of this giant square of library books is our enchanting table so that we can maximize on enchanting. Every now and then there's a creeper in here though. So let's get up here. Um, I've also got an anvil placed over here because the, the enchanting the this thing the enchanting table was floating in mid-air and i really didn't like it and i didn't i just didn't want to put a block of wood down there so i thought oh well let's put an anvil over here in case we need um you know an anvil and an enchanting table are actually quite good together because sometimes you need to name items and and, and so on and so forth so we can do that right here um in the wizard's tower and i think that looks pretty sweet like the enchanting table sitting on top of an anvil i think that looks pretty awesome all right so let's get a level 30 enchant onto skull cap of the dog and let's just click it a couple of times three four five six seven is my lucky number and give us something sweet comply all right let's see what we get please be awesome bam fire protection four and aqua affinity one now if that is not awesome i don't know what is i'm assuming aqua affinity allows us to breathe underwater better let's stick it on and actually sit in this water see what happens yeah check i think oh our breath actually goes down a little bit lower i think a little bit slower is that right let's have a look no i th i think our breath is going down the same speed i'm not entirely sure what aqua affinity does actually um maybe it lets you swim faster or something i don't know it's only aqua affinity one right so it can't be having that big of an effect however we do we did get fire aspect four which is amazing because that means we can head into the nether um with both of our fire protection armors plate mail of the dog uh no, no uh, slippers of the dog has fire protection four so now slippers of the dog and skull cap of the dog both have fire protection four that means we're going to basically be freaking fire immune and uh, if that's not sweet, then I don't know what is. <laughs> um, so that is awesome, guys. We have a we only have to enchant one more bit of the armor set of the dog, and then we have a fully enchanted set of diamond armor. And man, that is freaking sweet. Next up in this episode, guys, I want to just uh, pimp out um, old Griswold's house a little bit because currently he doesn't have anything in there. He doesn't have a bed. He doesn't have a crafting table. He doesn't have a stove. He actually he basically has nothing so i'm going to take some chests for him and uh maybe we could oh, we only got one bookshelf though that's that's kind of unfortunate we'll give him a crafting table or so and uh we've got some cobblestone in here we can make him a nice little furnace and i want to make him a cauldron also um what else can we give him we're going to give him chests yeah we'll give him chests oh we need to give him a bed obviously so let's have a look we've got some wool in here we'll give him a nice blue bed i think um and we'll just pick up oh we've got we've got loads of plankage in here anyway sweet I, oh man i'm so prepared for today's episode this is awesome and uh while i've been rummaging around in my chest i found this block of gold also which is awesome which means we can add another block of gold to granny dog's monument in this episode and that is fan freaking tastic let's uh get old grizzy a bed and let's make him a furnace also so wheat and i guess we can we can make him some we can make him like a see if we can make him a couch or something yeah i'll make him a couch why not all right awesome all right sweet okay so let's go pimp out did i make him a furnace yeah let's go pimp out griswold's pad a little bit um uh, just make it look a little bit better than it is currently he's literally griswold is sleeping on the floor <laughs> that's probably why he's so keen to come and hang out with beatrice man he just wants to have a proper night's sleep um that, that, that's my bad man 
You know, in, in Mole City, life is hard, man. Life is tough around here, Griswold. <laughs> Check at him, he's, he's checking out the building. He's like, yeah, man, this, this building is so awesome. He's still checking out that freaking apartment, it looks like it. All right, so let's get let, let's let's build this guy a nice little house over here. Looks like we've got some some uh, vineage we need to get rid of. Get rid of this mold, man. Griswold, your place is freaking moldy. Damn, son, you need to do something about that. All right, let's stick Grizzy's bed over. Hmm. Oh, there isn't actually a central place over here. That's unfortunate. Um, well, we, yeah, we're probably gonna have to make him a double bed, right? So we'll stick his bed over here. And then we can stick a couple of chests next to his bed. Get out of the way, Greg number two. Move, Greg clone. Put another chest over there. We'll stick his bed over here, right? And then I think, yeah, we can we can stick his little kitchenette over here, I think. And I think we'll make him another stove, actually. Man, I'm I'm increasing the value of his freaking apartment exponentially up in here, man. Better be happy with that. And let's make him a cauldron. Where he can wash his dishes. <laughs> awesome. Okay, awesome. Well, I just want to make this guy one more bed, I think. Um, definitely can't let that slide or OCD is going to freaking kick in and go cray cray up in here. So let's head back in the storage room to make this butthole another bed. Beatrice actually has a... Does she have a triple bed? Yo, B! Do you have a triple bed? Yeah, you got a triple bed. Damn, girl. Um, let's see. Can we, do we have any? Do we have any paintings in here? Hmm. No, no paintings. I thought I could put a couple paintings up for old Grizzy, but we don't got no paintings. We might have some paintings in this chest over here. Though. Let's have a look. Uh, we got some signage. No, signage isn't going to do. Can I remember how to make a painting? I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to noob out again. Let's pick up some wool. Um, I'm trying to remember how to make a painting. I think it's... Do you need paper? Does one require paper to make a painting? I believe the answer is... I, I don't think you do, actually. Now that I think about it. Right, let's make Grizzy his uh, his double bed. And then I think a painting is just like... Um, isn't it like this? Or paper? No? Oh god. Oh god, don't face palm, guys. Don't face palm. Is it wood surrounding a paper? No! Is it like that? No, that's a trap door. Oh god. I forgot how to make a painting. Okay, just check the wiki. I'm noobing out. <laughs> we don't need paper, we need wool. Which is kind of weird. You'd think that a painting would require freaking paper to make. I mean, who who paints on wool? I mean, honestly. Anyway, guys, a painting looks a little something like this. There we go. So sweet. Let's make like, yeah, let's just make him four paintings, I think. There we go, sweet. All right, Grizzy, I'm about to pimp out your pad even more. You better be grateful for this. He hasn't done any work so far. I haven't I haven't seen any smoke bellowing from the freaking chimney of the blacksmith's workshop, man. What is he actually doing? Oops. Griswold, what are you actually up to, my friend? Are you even working? I doubt it. <laughs> All right, let's get Dude, get get off there. Get off. There we go. All right, so double bed is made. And I think what we could probably do is um, give him a couple, like, bedside lamps or so. There we go. There we go. Looking so sweet. And now we can actually just pimp his pad out with a with a few paintings. Oh, no, no. That's that's way too big. You can't have that one, man. Man, I hate how the paintings fly off the wall when you break them. It's so weird. I, I don't know why they do that. It's very annoying. Whoa. <laughs> no, that's like a giant ass carpet. All right, guys, we hop back. I've just been fiddling around trying to get some nice paintings up for old Griswold. And as Griswold is a bachelor, and yes, he is a bachelor, 
He's got a whole bunch of bachelor stuff around his wall. Check, he's got like some swords on the wall. He's got this drawing because he's a blacksmith. That's, you know, obviously he's trying to, he's trying to think about how to make a golden block out of, out of dirt. This is his schematics. And then he's got this sweet ass, well, th this is almost like a picture of the mole district, <laughs> which I think is pretty sweet. So, uh, th you know, this kind of represents the apartment that he lives in. So that's pretty sweet. I think Griswold's pad is looking kind of pimped and I'm pretty happy with that. So if he doesn't like it, he can kiss my ass. <laughs> Um, but anyway, guys, we're going to move on to the next uh, part of today's episode. And I just want to see if there's, if I can find a little bit more cobblestone up around this place. Because I think we're going to need quite a lot of cobblestone for the next task. And uh, that is finishing off the wall just outside the mole hole um, to sort of cover the shame of the nether portal temple tunnel that has now jutted itself out for all to see. And I think we've got, do we have more cobblestone in here? No. All right. Well, I think we probably have enough cobblestone. Um in our inventory and i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about it, you it's you don't seldom see it man these dudes get away from the door man but all when you come around beatrice's house over here you can you can see it quite clearly there it is you see so that tunnel over there that is the nether portal temple tunnel and i just want to get rid of um i, I just want to get rid of that jazz and let's see can we can we get over there okay sweet so what we need to do is just build a wall of cobblestone in front of this wall of nether brick. So the cobblestone is going to run, the wall of cobblestone is going to run like this, right? And we're going to have to get rid of these little trees. Man, it is overgrown at this part of the mole hall, man. We never actually come here ever. So this is kind of cool, actually. And I think we're probably going to have to get rid of these little um, these little things too. Even though I really like them, when I when I first made them, I was like, oh man, this is so awesome. I think I actually made them in preparation for season two, as I remember. If you guys remember, um, at the beginning of season two, I'd done a whole bunch of mole hole maintenance, and I'd prepared the mole hole, and I'd prepared been I'd prepared Rentopia for season two, and I'd done a whole bunch of like enhancements to the mole hole. And I do believe that these little uh, these little things were those enhancements, but. You never really saw them because all of this vineage was basically covering um, the work that I'd done here. So we'll just get rid of these things. Sweet. All right, guys. Well, while I'm doing this, I, I want to start telling you a, a little bit of a story um, that I was inspired. Well, that I started thinking about a few weeks ago when I started speaking to a friend of mine who was a very good friend of mine at, at school. And uh, we were... We were quite similar in a lot of ways. We were both like gamers. We were both quite nerdy. We both, we weren't really into sport, but we played sport. We played rugby, we played football, we played cricket. And uh, we weren't like absolutely terrible at sport, but we much preferred playing like StarCraft and Counter-Strike and Diablo. And um, We were also both in the National Choir together. I think I've told you guys uh, about that when I, I went on a choir tour to Europe once and, and uh, he was in the, the choir with me. So we had like a, we had a ton of fun together. And um, we, we used to spend most of, most of our free time hanging out. And in fact, he was one of the guys that used to come and hang out with me at the forts that I used to make. And uh, he actually helped me make quite a few of the forts. So um, he was a pretty, a pretty, good, friend, a pretty good friend of mine actually. And uh, I was speaking to him the other day and he told, he let me know that he's had a kid. He's actually had a baby and I was like damn man that is absolutely crazy um, you know when suddenly can we are we gonna be able to go down here yeah when suddenly your friends from school ha have a kid it's like wow that is crazy man because um, the reason that I wanted to tell you the story is because you know the memories that I I haven't actually seen this guy in a very long time maybe in like I don't know t I don't know ten years I guess or no maybe less maybe five years and uh, so much has happened in that time but the only memories that i really have of him and there we go guys we finished off the wall i think what i'll probably do is re-add those um, little braises that i had at some point to this new wall but that that's looking sweet um and now guys i'm going to carry on with my story in a second i just want to i just want to let you know what we're doing next next we're going to go start preparing the area for the new cyber dog uh, this new cyberdog monument that we're going to be building over there but uh, anyway the, the reason that i was thinking about this is because i was i was thinking about this guy right and i was thinking about like all the fun and stuff that we used to have and i realized to myself that the only the only memories that i really have of him are from when we were at school together and so my image of him is very much set in a in a different place i don't really know him as like an adult or as an older person 
I, I only really know him as a kid, right? Because that's what I remember. That's the, that's the only part of him that I remember is us being like 12 years old. And I was thinking back to a memory that I had with him that is actually a very, it's a crazy, crazy ass memory. And it was an, actually a very, very scary moment for me and for him uh, in our lives. We were about 12 years old and it was, it was basically like the, the first month that we got to high school. Now our, our high school was a boarding school establishment, right? So our, our high school was like um, a boarding school in the mountains and the, the way the only the only way that you got looked after was by teachers or by uh, prefects and prefects were assigned if you were in your last year of school you could become a prefect and uh, so prefects were like 17 18 years old and then they sort of had quite a lot of power over everybody else at the school in fact a pre if a prefect told you to do something you you pretty much had to do it it was like the you know the, the rules of the school were, were uh, set as such that if a, pre a prefect told you to do something you you had to do it right and um <laughs> when you were when you were 12 at my school you were literally like a nothing you were you were literally an absolute you were you were just a worm right i mean you, you didn't have any sort of authority of any kind uh your word was absolute rubbish and we pretty much had to do everything that the prefects asked us to and that included anything and everything from making the prefects beds in the morning to bringing them lunch or dinner at night or in the afternoon to, to taking their dirty socks and underwear to the laundry place to freaking writing 10,000 lines on a piece of paper saying how awesome the prefect was. I mean, it, there, there is an unlimited amount of things that um, a prefect could make you do. And um, <laughs> on this particular occasion, one of the prefects got really upset with with uh, the entire sort of first year um, block of students in my hostel, right? So in, in our hostel were about 20 12 year olds, 20 14 year olds, 20 16 year olds. So like um, set one, set two, set three, set four, set five, right? There were about 20 people in each of those sets um, in, in the one hostel. And at the school, I think there were like 10 hostels. So there were quite a few kids, at the, there were quite a few um, pupils at the school, but in our particular in our particular hostel we had one prefect who was a giant ass butthole i mean he was he was a monster of a person absolutely malevolent uh, very very sadistic and he I, I, didn't, I didn't even know how this guy became a prefect but um he used to take great and grand pleasure in treating us um new boys like absolute crap like uh, when when you first got to my school, you were called a new boy, right? Obviously, because you were you were new to the school, so um, you were a new boy, and uh, you were absolutely nothing. And the prefects were gods. And one day, we we every single night at my school, at seven p.m., seven p.m. to nine p.m. I think it was, we used to have uh, a session called prep. And in prep, we would do our homework, and um, all all of the new boys would have to sit in the in the classroom. And then there would be one prefect there who would watch over us and make to make sure that we would do our prep and uh you know we weren't allowed to talk or uh, or you know misbehave or anything like that and it was the job of the prefect to make sure that the new boys weren't misbehaving and one prep um all of us decided to sort of gang up against this prefect and we started like throwing paper balls at him and basically started being buttholes ourselves but he kind of deserved it because he himself was a ridiculous ridiculous butthole and um <laughs> he got so freaking angry that he laid down a freaking a, a, a fist of retribution that almost ended in tragedy and uh, i'm going to be telling you exactly about what happened there in a second let's just uh, take another sleep when the sun goes down and then i'm going to tell you exactly what i've been doing over there at the new cyberdog monument and then i will continue with my freaking story so let's just have a quick nap come on man i i know i can't sleep at any i can only sleep at night but the sun is freaking down hey griswold come and uh come and lie with me man let's bond <laughs> man he's not interested he's gone <laughs> he's working at last at last you're doing some work sweet all right guys so while i've uh, just been talking about my school and and building up to the story I've just uh, finished off building the staircase, which is going to run up to the base of the new Cyberdog Monument. And um, we're going to have to put some stairs in here also. And the stairs are basically, the stairs are just going to take us all the way up to the Cyberdog Monument that is going to sit up here on this level over here. Now, what I'm planning on doing, I, I, I'm not going to tell you exactly what the monument is going to be just yet, 
But what I'm planning on making is a sweet ass structure that is going to be in the same shape as the Cyberdog uh, logo. So, you know, the, the cog in the Cyberdog logo, I want to try and recreate a building to look like that cog, right? So let's just let's just get the, the foundations laid. Okay, so if this is going to be the one side of the cog, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 blocks long, so we need to go 12 blocks long in this direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then 12 in this direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. 10, 11, 12. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, sweet. All right, so this is working out quite nicely. Um, so you can see we're just making a giant one of those structures over there that we've got at the mole hole. But what I want to do coming off of all of these things is actually have like a little cog, right? So coming off this one, for example, will be a cog that goes like this. Right, it's going to come out like this. I'm not entirely sure how many blocks will go out, but let's let's just say, for example, we go out that many blocks. And we'll do exactly the same for the diagonal lines too. And that will basically make what will hopefully look like a Cyberdog cog. Um, it's obviously the, it's not completely round. It's more uh, of an octagonal shape. Octagonal? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um. There we go. So that looks pretty sweet. So then this cog will go out like this, right? Yes, that's that is going to work absolutely perfectly. Actually, that is awesome. Well, actually, I think we'll make it. I think we'll make the cog go from from here, like this, right? So this cog is going to go out like that from that corner diagonally, and then from this corner diagonally too, like that. And then they'll connect up over there. Okay, sweet. Yeah, that's that is actually going to be really awesome. And by the way, this uh, this structure is going to be massive. So um, yeah, I, I kind of wanted it to be really big. And I think this is yeah, this is looking pretty good. This is looking pretty decent. All right, guys, we are back, and I have just laid out a quick foundation for what this is going to look like. And I'm just going to sort of clean it up um, while I finish off my story. Um, but it is looking pretty freaking sweet. It is going to be absolutely massive. And uh, we are also going to have to dig away more of this mountain also uh, to accommodate this new monument because uh, it is kind of massive. And it looks like we're going to need a butt ton more resources also in the in the shape of um, in the shape of cobblestone and stone and all of that jazz. So we're going to have to get the the furnace room fired up at some ridiculous rate at some point but anyway while i'm cleaning this up guys let me continue on my story so <clears throat> so one day um as i was saying in prep we were causing a, a butt ton of trouble and we were throwing paper balls at this prefect and uh, we were just making fun of him and laughing at him when he was telling us to do stuff we were you know it, it was kind of like a mob mentality you know it's like because we all became brave enough to stand up against the prefect suddenly his authority disappeared and we we were uh, you know able to do whatever we wanted and uh well we thought that we would be safe but obviously um <laughs> we underestimated the the vitriol of this particular prefect and um later that night we all went back to our beds and we all went back to our dormitories we stayed in dormitories of um about six boys in each dormitory and uh we went back to our dormitory for some sleep and we didn't actually realize how freaking bad the, the stuff that we had done. Or we didn't actually realize the, the consequences that our actions would have. And uh, we went to sleep. And, you know, that night I remember very clearly just uh, chilling in my bed, looking up at the ceiling, talking to all of my, my, fellow, um, my fellow students, laughing about how we treated this, this prefect so badly. And, uh, you know, generally just feeling really smug about ourselves that we, we had managed to stand up to this monster of a person and, and, and managed to treat him badly and, and, and make him feel really dumb. <laughs> oh, how dumb we would feel. Uh, because at about four o'clock the next morning, after we were all sound asleep, suddenly all of the doors of all of our do dormitories slammed open. I mean, and when I say slammed, I mean slammed. I mean, it, it literally 
there was a prefect at each door of the dormitory. So all of our dormitories were right next to each other. And um, literally, each of the prefects had positioned themselves outside of the door of each of um, the dormitories. And they, I think they'd probably done a countdown. And as they got to zero, they all kicked the doors at the same time. So all of the doors of all of the new boys' dormitories flew open. And the prefects stormed into our room, screaming at the top of their lung, lungs, swearing at us, telling us to get the hell out of our beds, to put on um, just just training shorts so just shorts that you would wear for football or for rugby with no shirt no shoes no socks just training shorts and to be downstairs at the front of the dormitory in five minutes asap and we all jumped out of our bed still sleep in our eyes scurried to our freaking um, cupboards got those freaking workout shorts on no shirt nothing and all scampered down all 20 of us little 12 year old kids man <laughs> with with high voices and barely any freaking knowledge or any wisdom in the world there we were scurrying like insects down to the bottom of the dormitory in just our shorts and guys it's important for me to also say that it was the middle of freaking winter and when i say it was cold and when i say that uh <laughs> it was cold enough to freeze grapes if you know what i'm saying people it was freaking freezing and uh, so cold that all of the grass around the dormitory was actually frozen and there was a layer of frost over the grass and man it, it was so freaking cold that you that we were shaking like absolute leaves we were standing outside while the prefix were doing their roll call what they would do is they would start at the front of the line and each of us would have to say our name and then if one of us was missing we would be standing in alphabetical order and if one of us was missing then the whole group would be punished so there we were saying out our names one at a time with all of the prefects standing there all in really really warm coats and really warm um trench coats and duffel coats and whatever the, whatever they had and there we were in these tiny little shorts with nothing else on and the head of our house the head prefect then after roll call and after everyone was was accounted for came up to us and, and said to us that he'd heard about our behavior in the in prep the night before and he was incredibly unhappy and today we would feel the retribution of the prefects and we would learn our lesson to never ever treat a prefect badly again and basically what the head of house said to us was you guys are going to go and swim across the lake right now and not only that you are going to run there you have five minutes to get there and if we get there before you do then there's going to be even more trouble for you now the lake was about a kilometer away from the school and the only way you could actually get to the lake was running across the the fields and running through um <clears throat> so you had to run through the the athletics field and then join up to this tiny dirt road track that ran through this this uh, little little forest wooded area and then you would come out of there and there there would be the lake and it wasn't really a lake it was a very small lake it was probably half a kilometer no not even geez man it was probably 200 meters across right really really short really really small lake but that was the that that was the least of our worries the the, the lake was not the problem i don't know how many of you guys have ever had to run across a, f a frozen field in bare, in just bare feet with no shoes or anything and uh, if you have you'll know exactly what i'm talking about man those blades of grass they turn into freaking blades of steel and they feel like they are tearing into your flesh with every single step that you take and we as a group ran as fast as we could to get across that field we ran from our dormitory through the school halls all the way out the front of the school past the church down uh, by the side of the church across a very stony very gravelly road which also felt like it was shredding our feet to shreds we then got to the athletics track and ran all the way across the athletics track to join up to the dirt road that would take us all the way to this little lake and uh once we'd gone got over the freaking bladed grass field we got to the cobblestone road and let me tell you something guys after you've run across a frozen field with at minus three degree weather in bare feet when you get to a gravel road it is literally like a blacksmith is pounding your feet to smithereens with a giant freaking hammer man and <laughs> it was the worst freaking run that i've ever ever been on and uh, we, we've just run out of cobblestone but we've almost filled up this gap here so i'm gonna head back and uh, get a little bit more cobblestone now where does phil come into this whole story well phil was with me at the time he was in my dormitory and um, 
One of the things about Phil was that he had asthma. And for those of you guys who have asthma, you know that like, you know, strenuous exercise, cold weather, all of these kind of things are really, really bad for your asthma. And it can be actually very, very dangerous for you um, as a person with asthma to do strenuous activity without your asthma pump. And after roll call and after we started running to get to the field, Phil was lagging behind the group. And I slowed down because he was my friend and I wanted to make sure that he was cast. I slowed down and I was running next to him. And he looked at me with absolute terror in his eyes and he said to me, Rendog, <laughs> and yes, he called me Rendog. He said to me, Rendog, I don't have my asthma pump with me. And obviously we, he couldn't bring his asthma pump because we were just in, in shorts. We, he didn't have a pocket or anything. And I think in, in the panic that ensued when the prefects had smashed down the doors of our dormitory, he'd just forgotten about his asthma pump. But we were already on our way there. And the prefects, because they had shoes on, were able to outrun us to get to the, get to the lake before us. So they were way ahead of us. So we couldn't stop any of them to say, look, Phil doesn't have his asthma pump. We need to go back. And, you know, they said to us, if you guys don't get there in five minutes, then there's going to be serious repercussions. And he said to me, should I go back and get my asthma pump? And I said to him, Phil, you can't, man. You can't. If you go back to get your asthma pump, the whole dormitories will get punished. All of the new boys will be punished again. You're just going to have to suck it up, man. You're just going to have to take it. And of course, I was 12 years old, man. I didn't realize how dangerous asthma can be. I didn't realize that Phil was in that moment in potentially a life-threatening situation. Anyway, he, like the man that he was, picked up his socks not literally, <laughs> metaphorically, uh, picked up his socks and lifted his head and he said, okay, let's go. And he literally started running at full speed to catch up with the group. I've, I've never seen such courage come out of a, such a small kid. And uh, we, we both caught up to the group and we eventually made our, our way along this freaking frozen dirt road um, all the way to this lake. And it was basically pitch black night or so as it was winter in South Africa and the sun only comes up really late. And we got to the lake and the, the prefix were there with torches and they were shining the torches across the, the, the water of the lake and it was dead still. And it was covered in smoke. And it, it, it almost felt like the freaking Loch Ness monster was gonna come out of there or that there was some beastly giant squid waiting for us in the water as soon as we jumped in. And we all huddled on the side of that freaking lake like a whole bunch of tadpoles. <laughs> uh, on the bank of that on, of that lake listening to what the prefects were telling us and the prefects basically said to us you are going to be swimming across this lake as punishment for your behavior um, at prep last night and I remember Phil was standing behind me and he was shaking uncontrollably and he whispered into, me, into my ear I don't think I can do this and I, I looked back at him but before I could say anything the head prefect said everybody in now and start swimming right away and if you don't get to the other side of this lake by the time i walk around to the other side of this bank you will be swimming back and uh that of course prompted 20 very young very cold little boys to jump <laughs> directly into a frozen freaking lake which must have been i don't know just a few degrees above freezing i would i would say and I, I went head first into the lake and I heard Phil come in after me because he was directly behind me and I decided to myself that I was going to take it slow and that I was going to stick with Phil and I was going to swim right next to him to make sure that he would be fine and to make sure that he would get across the lake and if need be I would be able to help him. When you go to boarding school and, and you share these kind of experiences with other, other people, you, you generally form like really tight bonds. In, in almost like a military way, I think. You, you, you form like really tight friendships. When people suffer together, they, they become really close. And, and you know, you, you sort of do what you have to do for the good of the group. And that's the sort of mentality, you know. It's, it's no longer like, it's no longer I have to help myself. It's more about helping the group or helping someone in the group. And, and I, guess, I guess that's one of the good things about boarding school. There's a lot of things about boarding school that I don't like. But one of the good things about boarding school are these sort of bonds that you create. And uh, while the rest of the boys were swimming as fast as they could to, the, to get to the other side of the lake, I knew that Phil would be much slower. And even though he might not get there by the time the prefect got to the other bank, I didn't want him to be the only one um, to receive punishment for not swimming fast enough. And maybe the, the, the prefect would, have, would make him swim across again and maybe that would be really dangerous for him. So I was swimming with him. And I remember it was so cold that we could barely move our muscles, man. It, it, it was ridiculous. I've never felt such cold in, my, in all my life. 
and I remember trying to look back at Phil, it was so dark and the only light that we had was from the torches that the prefects were shining on us from the other side of the river. So I could barely see Phil, I could barely see if he was okay, but I could hear him very clearly and he was panting. He was panting like, I don't know, like I've never heard. He was wheezing, man. It's like his lungs were collapsing and that is probably what was happening. His lungs probably were collapsing and he somehow in, in, in the middle of a breath, managed to to get out a sentence and he said to me i can't do this i can't do this i'm going to drown help me he was he was basically going to drown he couldn't breathe he couldn't get oxygen into his lungs and 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 so because he wasn't getting oxygen into his body his arms were unable to to keep him afloat his legs were unable to kick and slowly but surely i remember seeing his head slowly going down under the water and i knew that this was bad times for Phil because he didn't have his asthma pump and even if we could get him out of the water, you know, maybe it, it would be too late because he, he, couldn't, he couldn't breathe. And I started screaming at the top of my lungs, screaming as if something, someone had shot me or, or as if a giant squid had just taken hold of my left foot. And I was screaming so, so loud that one of the prefects, well, the head boy of our year actually, who was actually a very decent guy, took off his clothes and jumped into the lake from the other side of the lake and swam as fast as he could across the water to get to Phil. Because um, he suddenly saw with the torchlight that Phil was struggling to, to swim. And he got there and when he got to me, he asked me what was wrong and I said to him, Phil doesn't have his asthma pump and he immediately knew what was wrong. And he basically um, did a, 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 life, a lifeguard maneuver to get Phil out there. So he swam on his back while holding Phil under his arms and dragged him along to get him out of the water and to get him to the bank. And luckily, luckily, on the bank, once he had got there, one of the other prefects who also had asthma, had an asthma pump there. And uh, he managed to, to give Phil uh, some of, you know, a suck from the asthma pump and managed to, to help him out. And also the head prefect gave Phil all of his clothes and clothed him as quickly as possible. And uh, that was, <laughs> That was intense, man. That was one of the very first times that, as a kid, I encountered, like, death of a friend, you know, that could have happened. Um, that was one of the very first times that I recognized how fragile life can actually be. And when a suddenly very serious situation comes into play like that, you suddenly realize how very close Phil was or how very close life can get to just ending prematurely or ending for some stupid reason like a prefect being upset because 12 year olds were insulting him during his preparation class um but yeah man that that was that was my, that was my memory of phil and you know i was just thinking to myself after he told me that he'd he'd had a couple of kids i was thinking you know that that was one of my my memories of you and and for you to have come from that crazy, crazy situation to, to being able to make an entire family of your own is absolutely epic. And, uh, you know, it's just so awesome. I, and I don't know if, if Phil watches my videos, but if you do, man, I just want to say that I'll, I will never forget that day. And, and, uh, and yeah, and, and maybe you shouldn't either. Maybe that day was, was, <laughs> was b helped both of us realize like how fragile life is and, and how important things like family is. And, how important it is to keep people that you love really close to you at all times and um, and also how not to be a butthole <laughs> and uh, i'm talking to that prefect if you're watching this video man you freaking butt bandit <laughs> but anyway guys wow that was that was intense wow i, I really got into that story uh, myself I, I don't actually know what we've done <laughs> i think we basically we, we've prepared the foundations for the the new cyber dog monument pretty well and what i want to do now guys is just get a block into granny dog's monument um that's definitely one of the things that i wanted to do today so let's add this block of gold over here and that is that is awesome man one more block to the staircase that we are all climbing right now and uh, let's just quickly go have a look and review what we've actually done because I, I kind of zoned out during the telling of that tale and uh, I have kind of forgotten what's happened over here. All right, so we've managed to flatten out the area um, for the new Cyberdog Monument. I'm going to have to get rid of this entire mountainside over here. So it's going to be TNT time in the next molehole maintenance episode. And then I'm going to finish off the cogs that, that are going to be running out from all uh, corners of this structure. Um, we're also going to have to insert some physics anti-physics fail um, pillars over here to, to prop up all of this stuff and especially on this side we've got a giant overhang over here 
So we're going to have to make a really big pillar over here to sort out that physics fail. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with how the monument is turning out. It's going to be absolutely massive. It looks like this is probably going to be the biggest monument in uh, Mall City, or the biggest structure in Mall City anyway. Definitely bigger, a bigger surface area than the, the Nether Portal Temple, that's for sure. Uh, so that's kind of cool, man. I'm kind of excited about that. In fact, I'm really excited about that. I actually brought a map along with us. Um, I think I dropped it off somewhere. Oh, dang it! <laughs> I brought a map with us because I wanted to see what the map would look like, but it looks like I've, I've left it somewhere. And uh, in the intensity of that story that I told, I've kind of forgotten. But anyway, guys, um, we're, that is the, the foundations for the new Cyberdog Monument in place. Very, very happy with how it's looking. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time um, in the next molehole maintenance episode working more on the foundation so that it's going to become a little bit more clear to you guys exactly what I'm actually building over there and um, <clears throat> so check so keep your eyeballs out for the next molehole maintenance episode there's only one more thing left to do in this episode guys and that is to get some of you buttholes onto the dogolith man it has been a long time since we've got some of you guys onto the dogolith so let's get up there as soon as we possibly can looks like the t oh man <laughs> the dogolith is so high now it's it actually kind of gives me vertigo coming up here. Um, maybe I need to put some railings around here. I mean, it's precarious up in this jazz. But we are up here. We've already finished off one, one wall for Season 3. So now we need to finish off this wall before Episode 50, I think. But I'm going to add uh, another eight of you guys onto the Dogolith now. And uh, once I've got you guys up, I will bring you back to introduce the new cyber dogs that have been immortalized on the Interbubs forever. Comply! All right, Cyberdogs, we are back, and I have got eight more of you guys onto the Dogolith, starting with YouTube subscribers. We have got Control Alt Delete, The Brick 11, Bryce Mera, and Forklift 959. Welcome to the Dogolith, my friends. And now from dogcraft.net, we've got Enderdog 19, Merhar Dog, Scott Ball 72, and Confront Me. Welcome to all of you guys to the Dogolith. You have been immortalized in the Interbubs forever. And remember, guys, if you want to stand a chance of seeing your name on this giant ass monolith, you need to be a subscriber of the Ren Dog channel and leave me a constructive comment here and there on one of my videos. I randomly select you guys from the comments across my videos. There is also a thread on dogcraft.net where you can stick your YouTube username to stand a chance of being added to the Dogolith from there. And uh, dogcraft.net is the official CyberDog fan community it's free to join you've got to be 13 though but it's absolutely free and there's a whole butt ton of cyber dogs there the whole butt ton of servers a whole butt ton of fan art a whole butt ton of amazing jazz goes on at dogcraft.net so if you haven't checked it out yet go and check it out and come and say hello in the chat section man there's always cyber dogs in there to chat to you and it's freaking sweet well guys i really hope you have enjoyed this episode it was awesome taking you guys down a trip to memory lane back to when i was 12 years old swimming across a frozen lake with a, a dying friend <laughs> and if you have enjoyed it show me the love man hit that freaking like button if you haven't subscribed yet hit that freaking subscribe button and uh, guys this has been rend up playing minecraft survival man in the next episode we're going to carry on working on the cyber dog monument and uh, hopefully we will get much further than we did today and uh can't wait to show you guys exactly what i've got planned man it is going to be freaking sweet all right guys well this has been rend playing minecraft survival we will see you in the next video <laughs> goodbye my friends